Hey guys, uh, we've got news about the awakening system, the core mechanics of it. It's going to be a video released soon by Raid. Uh, when you see this, this will also be live, so you can watch it at your own pace if you want to. But I'll be reacting to it and giving you guys my thoughts on it. So let's get started. Hey everyone, and welcome to a new update preview episode. Today, we're going to talk about awakening, diving a little deeper into some of the things we didn't have time for in our most recent What's Next video. We're also working on a second video covering the Iron Twins Fortress, the boss's skills, and highlighting some tactics and strategies to help take the twins down. But right now, we're focusing on Awakening itself. Let's start with the basics. Awakening unlocks at level 42 and is kind of like a mixture of Ascension and Masteries. The Awakening part itself is similar to Ascension. You awaken your champions star by star to make them stronger. In fact, one of the only real rules for Awakening is that you can't awaken a champion to a higher Awakening level than their Ascension level. So, you awaken them, then what? Here's where you'll find the similarity to Masteries. Once you awaken a champion, you can choose a blessing for them. These are like super-powered passive skills that can completely transform how you use a champion, unlocking new levels of potential or altering what they do entirely. Each blessing belongs to a specific divinity. For now, there are four. Light, Dark, War, and Chaos. As soon as you awaken a champion, you get to pick any blessing you want. No questions asked. Well, within reason. Like champions, blessings have rarities, so rare champions can only get rare blessings. Epic champions can choose rare or epic blessings, and legendary champions have access to everything. But still, once you've awakened a champion, you don't have to do anything else to actually unlock their available blessings. However, you can make all the blessings stronger by awakening your champion to higher levels. Every blessing gets better as a champion's awakening level increases, from improving the stat bonuses to unlocking entirely new effects and abilities. The best part? It's all tied to your champion's awakening level. You don't have to upgrade each blessing individually. If you have a champion at level 5 of awakening, they'll get the level 5 benefits of any blessing they choose. Simple. Not reacting so far because this is nothing new. Uh, two minutes in the video. You can video. also swap blessings at any time. Just like Masteries, the first change is completely free. But after that, mm. it's going to cost you some gems. 300 gems for the change? Oh my god. That's a month's worth of free-to-play gems you get from the daily quest, by the way. Gems. You can change to any blessing available from any divinity, but switching blessings within the same divinity will be slightly cheaper than changing their divinity entirely. Now, let's have a look at some of the blessings themselves, starting with one of our coolest blessings, Polymorph. This is a legendary blessing from the Chaos Divinity, and it does deliver on the Chaos front. Whenever any enemy places a debuff on a champion with this blessing, or steals or removes one of their buffs, there's a chance they'll receive a little debuff themselves. Only it's not a normal debuff, like an attack or defense decrease. They're going to get turned into a sheep and lose access to every single one of their skills. There's only a 5% chance of this happening at level 1, but if your champion is fully awakened all the way to level 6, you're going to have a 20% chance of turning potentially any champion into a sheep for two turns. And if you're wondering what life as a sheep is like, well, any champ that's been sheepified will only be able to use a single sheep skill. They'll charge forward, attack one enemy, and uh, that's it. But they're a sheep, so herd mentality comes into play. Whenever one sheep attacks, all the others will join the herd and attack too. Getting Amazing. turned into a sheep can basically take a champion out of the game for two whole turns, but it's not all bad. Every time you attack as a sheep, there's a 50% chance of removing the debuff and getting turned back into champion form again. And whenever you get rid of the sheep debuff, whether it expires or you lose all your HP as a sheep, you'll return to champion form at 50% HP, no matter how much HP you had before you got sheeped. It's a fun blessing, an even more fun debuff. And I don't see it as any uh, as powerful at all. It doesn't look anything special. We can't so wait far. to see what you do with it. Because it's a small chance to get it. When you fully rank it up, it's a 20% chance. It Basically, they lose their turn if uh, if they get sheathed, and then it's a 50% chance for it to break. So a stun is better. But I mean this, I, I guess it doesn't care about accuracy, maybe? So, that's a legendary blessing, but other champions have access to a lot of awesome blessings, too. 
Survival instinct is a rare blessing from the chaos divinity that can really turn a situation on its head. When an enemy uses a skill that places, spreads, or transfers a debuff onto a champion with this blessing, it's going to boost that champion's turn meter. It's an amazing blessing to make your champions interrupt your opponent's turn order and ruin their day. And here's another one. Carapace decreases the damage a champion takes while under a bunch of crowd control debuffs like stun, freeze, fear, or even petrification. Um, I kind of like this, especially for damage dealers. On top of that, it also provides some sizable boost. To oh, wait, it decreases the damage receives? All right. To the champion's HP, resistance, and speed. Never mind. Making them far better equipped to make it through enemy stun locks in the arena or in those tough boss battles. And remember, these last two blessings are rare, so it's not just the top tier champions that will be getting some serious benefits from blessings. All right, we've taken a detailed look at three blessings from the Chaos Divinity, but let's quickly highlight a few blessings from the other divinities too, starting with the War Divinity. Life Harvest increases the champion's turn meter whenever an enemy is revived and destroys a portion of that enemy's max HP for good measure, making them weaker nice. every time. Chainbreaker helps champions break free from crowd control debuffs, Commanding Presence boosts your team's aura, and Hero's Soul boosts a champion's damage against bosses, according to the number of enemies in battle. It'll be huge for the Spider's Den. Next up, Light Divinity. Yeah, but you still get maxed out. Like, for a Cold Heart, she's still gonna do max damage. The Do-Gooders. The Lightning Cage Blessing protects your buffs and boosts your damage with Lightning Balls. Heaven Cast makes your default skill ignore some of your enemy's resistance, which is great for those with key debuffs on their first skill. And here's one of my favorites. Miracle Heal helps recover some destroyed HP whenever the Blessed Champion heals. Excellent for bringing into Hydra battles. And finally, the Dark Divinity. As you'd expect, they're not manipulating rainbows. Take Ward of the Fallen. It gives you special bone armor to protect you from attacks, then gives you more as your allies perish around you. At the highest level, you'll even Bone armor is actually, you have that in Diablo Immortal, but I guess it's not unique. Summon undead skeletons to charge at your enemies. It's awesome. That's, the lethal yeah. dose blessing then increases the damage you deal from poison debuffs in the arena and ignores some of the enemies resist. Like, who cares? Like, when did we ever build a poison team for Arena? Since while you're at it. If that doesn't sound painful enough, the Cruelty Blessing destroys some of your enemy's defense, making them far, far easier to hurt. All right, that's a super quick... That, that's good for bosses, actually, de de destroying the defense. If it's like a, a debuff that is placed... ...fly through of a few of the coolest blessings. Keep an eye on our social channels for more. Now you know why you want to awaken your champions. Let's talk about how. It all starts here at the Altar of Souls. Well, kind of. It actually starts at the Iron Twins Fortress. That's where you'll beat the Iron Twins to earn the soul coins you'll need to start the awakening process. But we're making a dedicated video on the Twins later, so we'll ignore them for now. Now, imagine, you're the best. You crush the Iron Twins. You've got all the soul coins in the world. Time to get your hands on champion souls and awaken some champions. To start, let's recap a few rules. Only rare, epic, and legendary champions can be awakened, and each champion needs their own souls. You can't awaken Venus with Valkyrie souls, for example. Another big thing to remember is that your ascension level matters for awakening. Champions can't be awakened to a higher level than their current ascension level. To make it easy to track, your awakening level is indicated with a fashionable red color. Okay, so souls. There are two types of souls, perfect souls and split souls. Perfect Souls let you awaken your champion to the exact level indicated by the number of stars they have without any extra steps or requirements. If you're lucky enough to find a six-star Perfect Soul for Valkyrie, you can fully awaken her in a single step. Split Souls. Split Souls, on the other hand, awaken your champions one level at a time. For example, if you find a five-star Split Soul, you'll only be able to use that on champions that have already reached level four of awakening. Now let's talk about getting those souls. Perfect souls are the most flexible and powerful, so you'll want to get your hands on as many of these as possible. The main way is by summoning them with soul stones, which always gives you perfect souls. And to get soul stones, you'll need to head to the Mystic Market and use the soul coins you've earned from beating the Iron Twins. There are three soul stone types, mortal, immortal, eternal. The better the soul stone, the better your chances of receiving top tier yeah, the, uh, souls, so meaning higher level souls for higher do. rarity champions. You can see the breakdown on screen right now. Summoning souls using soul stones requires silver in addition to the soul stones themselves, and the process is similar to summoning champions from shards, so you should get used to it in no time. 
As an added bonus here, you'll be able to constantly upgrade your stockpiles of soul coins through using soul stones. For example, if you use 10 mortal soul stones, you'll receive 200 immortal soul coins. You can also get some eternal soul coins by All using right. immortal soul stones. That's pretty cool. So the, the more you use it, you, you get something back. Um, that's good, but I, I, I still don't know if the if they're going to mention if, if this is going to be something that they sell. It's a nice easy ladder that means you can get high tier soul stones just for summoning souls. But that's not all. As you know, there are hundreds of champions in raid and getting the right soul for the right champion sounds like it could take a while. So we've got something to help speed that process up. Introducing the wish list. You'll get to choose nine champions to add to your list. Then your odds of summoning perfect souls for those champions from soul stones will be doubled. Simple, no strings attached. So that double doesn't doesn't sound as much as you think, Liam, because it's we have over a hundred legendary champions. Not even talking about the void legendary. So do you double the chance to what from a one percent less than one percent to what one percent covers perfect souls? But what about split souls? You can get split souls from the soul merchant, but instead of using soul stones, you'll be exchanging soul essence. You can either find soul essence by raiding the Iron Twins Fortress or by buying it with soul coins. Fortunately, the advantage of the soul merchant is that you get to pick and choose which souls you want. The merchant has souls of every level and rarity, but the merchant's stock changes all the time. You'll need to stop by regularly and see what's in stock. To make it even more appealing, the merchant likes to make sure they have what you're looking for, so you'll never get a split soul that's of a lower level than what you need. For example, if you have... All right, that, that's the best thing in the video so far. So it explains that from the merchant, you'll never get a split soul that you have already. So you'll always be getting upgrades, essentially, if you started, let's say, on Valkyrie. So that's what he's going to say. If you have a Valkyrie at level 3 of Awakening, the next split soul you see for Valkyrie will be level 4. And if a champion hasn't been awakened at all, you might even see a few level 1 perfect souls as well. So what you should be doing is, if you see one for a champion that you want, you should buy it. Because the next time you'll uh, you'll see them, it's going to be an upgrade. Bottom line, when it comes to the soul merchant, make sure you check in regularly to catch the souls you need. Those are all the ways to get souls, but once you have them, you'll need to know where to access them. This one's easy. Head to your soul collection. It functions pretty much the same as your champion's collection, where you can expand it if you need more slots. Oh, and one big thing to remember. You can always sell any souls you don't want to get some more soul coins. This way, nothing's wasted, and you get to start the hunt for souls again. And that's everything. Keep an eye out for that dedicated dungeon guide we've promised, and click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can catch it as soon as it's released. Until next time, happy raiding. Hey, everyone. So, um, yeah, it was a good video, nothing new, honestly, they just explained some of the skills, but although they did show the skills on their last video, and we, we could pause it and look at them, they only basically ex explained in depth on what the polymorph thing does, because that was their big, big change in the game, but honestly, this is a cool thing for defenders, for champions that are tanky, they'll be receiving the damage, taking the hits, and in that way, hopefully polymorphing the enemy if you have them fully awakened but yeah that's gonna take some time to fully awaken it hasn't answered the question of whether it's gonna be paid to win or not if you'll be able to actually buy it through packs which is what players are fearing and um it, it is though very expensive to change the blessings that you have so at least that part is heavily um, I wouldn't say pay to win, but heavily expensive compared to just changing masteries. So they did say 300 gems and even more expensive if you want to switch to light or dark or war or chaos. So if you want to switch blessings within the same one, that's like 200 or 300, I think. Because um, I saw 200, I think if you want to go to a, a rare blessing and it's more expensive if you want to go um, to, to the other ones. But yeah. I, I just want to see the thing in game and actually play it or hopefully if we get access to the test server that's gonna be um, our way to fully check this one out so this was the video guys what do you think leave it down below in the comments i'll see you in the next one see ya